Hey guys, welcome into Faith and Football. My name is Neil and I will be your host today. Today we're talking about the foundation, not just for your fantasy team, but for your spiritual life, for your walk with Christ. Our verse today comes from Proverbs chapter 10, verse 25 says, when the storms of life come, the wicked are whirled away, but the godly have a lasting foundation. When I was researching this, when I was looking for other passages, I also came across uh, Psalms chapter 18 in verse 2. It says, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saves me, and my place of safety. Look, we all have days where you know, we feel off, we, where we feel like everything's coming at us, that everything's going wrong, that we don't know what to do, we're kind of being batted around. You know, we call those the storms of life. And the Bible tells us that God is with us in those times. There's nothing in the Bible that says that you won't have hard times. As a matter of fact, it says that we will face hard times, that there will be difficulties in our life. But God allows these to come to us to test our faith, to say, hey, who are you leaning on? Are you leaning on me as your rock, as your, your guide, as your foundation for your life? Or are you trying to lean on yourself? See, a lot of times we get caught up in the world and, you know, we want to do everything ourselves. I know I'm guilty of that myself. So. I know that a lot of times when I've tried to do things on my own without God's help, without turning to anyone, a lot of times, actually all the time, I fall flat. I don't succeed or I don't do as good of a job as maybe I could have or I would have if I had have turned to God first. See, sometimes when I, when I lift my arm up, you might see this bracelet that I have on. It's from Our Savior's Church in Eunice. Um, uh, Eunice, Louisiana, and it says, pray first. Well, if you're not having a close walk with the Lord, then a lot of times your tendency is going to be to do first instead of pray first. So today I'm asking you to look and ask yourself, what is my foundation? Is it do I have a good family foundation, whether it's relatives or your church family? Um, where is your foundation? Is it found in the Bible? Are you standing on the rock, on the word of God? If you're not, like the Bible says, everything else is sinking sand. You know, we, we try to build our house, our foundation, our house of our life on a good foundation, on a solid foundation. And if you don't have that, it doesn't matter how big the house is. It doesn't matter how fancy it is. It doesn't matter how many amenities you have. All that matters is that foundation. If that foundation is off, then the whole house is gonna fall when something bad happens or something, a storm comes and rocks your foundation. See, if your foundation is the rock, then you won't have any problems. You, that you can't get through. I'm not saying that you won't have problems, but you'll be able to get through them with confidence. You'll be able to see the light on the other side. You'll be able to know that you have comfort in God when you walk through those storms of life. And let me ask you this, who is your foundation? Some people might say it's my, my husband or my wife. Some might say it's my family. But God should be the base and the sole foundation of your life. If you start with God, everything else is going to fall into place. Okay. So what I want you to do today, I want you to think about where you're putting your trust. Are you putting your trust in the things of man or are you putting your trust in the things of this world? And I just turned my light on. See, if you just turn on the light, things look so much better, don't they? So 
what I want you to do today, I want you to think about where your foundation is. If it's not on God, why not? I mean, what is there to lose? Nothing. Come on, guys. Put your trust, put your faith in something greater than yourself or in someone greater than yourself. The one who created you, the one who created everything. What better hands to be in than the hands of God? So I hope that was a little, that was uplifting for you. I hope it was positive. So we've got the faith in the faith in football for our first part. And I hope you enjoyed it. I, I love bringing you uh, these verses. It does my heart good. Uh, so I hope it does something for you guys as well. And if you would, please leave me a comment down at the bottom. If there's a certain verse that strikes you that you'd like to have on the show, I'd be more than happy to, to read it and uh, and discuss it. So bef- without further ado, let's get into the football aspect that we're here to here for today, as well as the spiritual uplifting. And we're talking foundations for your fantasy team. But before we get into that, I want to talk about our foundation sponsor for this show, Benzia of Lafayette. Uh, if you are in the Lafayette area, they are on Ducey Road. Uh, off of Johnson Street, behind the Johnson Street and ba- or Johnson Street, and I always say I want to say Ambassador Catherine, but they're all in the behind the Johnson Street Grand Theater uh, on Ducey Road, in front of Red Laurel's Health Club. Look, if you go down there within the month of August and you're running out of time, get down there, guys. And you mention Faith and Football sent you, then you get a free appetizer with your purchase of a meal. Go down there and tell them Neil sent you from Faith and Football. You might even have me uh, have me down there. So you never know. Come by, say hi. Say hey to, uh, to Heath and Leonard and all the guys down there. Uh, Chris and my boy Dusty. He might be out there. Leo, how's it going? Um, so go down there and check them out. Also, if you were in the Louisiana area, in the South Louisiana area, and you haven't been by Keller's Bakery in Youngsville or off the Youngsville Highway, uh, they are on at 627 Lafayette Street off the Youngsville Highway. If you mention Faith and Football sent you, when you go in and pick up your order, you get two free mini cupcakes. These are delicious. If you're, you know, like when you go into a place and you're really not sure what to get. So you want a sample. Perfect. You got your sample courtesy of Faith and Football. So you're welcome. Go down there and check them out. If you see a flavor that you've never had before, try it out. Give it a whirl. You never know what you might find. But tell them uh, Faith and Football sent you. Pick up your two free uh, mini cupcakes and thank them for the sponsorship of the show because without those guys, I'd go hungry. So let's get into it, guys. We're talking about foundations today. And there's a lot of schools of thought as to what your foundation for fantasy should be. But here's the thing. It really depends on where you draft. Okay, you've seen me do some mock drafts and we're going to do one here in a couple of minutes and we're going to show the foundation and how it changes from where you draft. If you draft in the first part of the the draft, like one through four, you're going to have a different look. You're going to have a different foundation than if you draft in the back half. See, in the first half, you're going to start running back. So the top four, no question. But then you're going to get into that middle part where you go, you know what? These guys are good. You know, the the Nick Chubb and the the Zeke and, you know, Eckler and all those guys. These are good, good choices. Maybe, you know, Saquon's there. You know, Derrick Henry's gone. uh, CMC is gone. uh, Kamara, Dalvin Cook. Those four guys are all gone. So you you left with that little middle pack and you got a couple of guys in there and you go, you know what? They're pretty good, but Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, they're a little better. Should I take them in the middle rounds? Should I jump up and grab them? That's up to you to decide. But just remember that those first couple of picks are going to set the foundation for the rest of your draft. If you take guys like CMC, Dalvin Cook, and you're at the one and two. When you come back around, 
you're looking at anywhere between like 16 to 18, 18 guys gone, depending upon if you're in the one or the two. So if all these guys are gone, you have to choose whether you're going to go like Mahomes, Kittle, because right now Kelsey's being taken at the back half of the first, top half of the second, if you're lucky. So when you're looking at that, having that number one or number two overall pick does give you some flexibility later in the draft, but it also locks you in to not having that top flight wide receiver, maybe settling for, you know, a guy who, while he's still, you know, productive for your team, wasn't the guy that you were hoping for. You know, you were hoping for Adams or Hill or Diggs, you know, maybe even D hop. Um, but if you are looking for all of that stuff and you're in the first part of the draft, you're not going to get it. Okay. So let's be realistic about this when we go into our fantasy drafts and remember the season today is Thursday, August 19th. We are exactly two weeks from the opening of the NFL season. How awesome is this? Okay. You're probably in the midst of your, your draft season. Uh, if you haven't done a draft already, it's probably coming up really soon. Ours is 12 days away. So I'm excited about it. I've been sending out uh, text messages through from the, uh, the group chat, through uh, the league chat. I'm hyped up about it. Every guy that, that's on my squad I'm talking to is like, hey, remember, request off. So if you guys are watching this, make sure you got your request off in, all right? Um, so. Let's get into today's mock draft. Remember, today's mock draft is brought to you by Sleeper. No, they're not a sponsor, but I absolutely love this platform. It was uh, I was turned on to it by the uh, fantasy footballers. So, uh, Jason, Mike, and Andy, guys, I appreciate you. I appreciate what you do for the, the industry. Thank you all so much, and keep up the awesome work. I will be tagging you guys in this. Uh, I don't know if you're going to see it or not because I'm small potatoes compared to what you guys are doing, but I love your work. Keep it up. Appreciate you. Uh, so as you see up at the top, we're doing uh, three minutes uh, per pick uh, just to give me some time to analyze. And then uh, 10 teams, 15 rounds. Uh, we're not inviting anybody. We're just doing this because uh, my guys are either at work or they're sleeping. So let's go ahead and kick this off and see what we got. Drafting from the fourth position and we see basically what's really gonna happen here in your mock draft, in your real live drafts, in your uh, redrafts. And I want you guys to remember something when you're doing these mock drafts. Doing a mock draft is just practice. Don't get into the mindset that this is what's gonna happen or this is how it's gonna play out because you're drafting against a computer, and even the people that you draft with live, if you pick like a live mock draft to do with a bunch of people, some of them might be not be taking it seriously as you do. I found that out a couple of days ago. Uh, I kind of got a little frustrated with it, but I, and I had to leave. I'm like, mm, no, this is just a bad habit to get into. Um, but your league mates, the guys who you know, who you draft with, Nine times out of 10, we're going to draft with people that we know. And we know their tendencies. We know their players that they like. We know who they're going to target. Don't fall into the trap of just taking guys that you like. Okay. Yes, it's important to have fun, but you're also putting this work in to win. Okay. So the reason I'm talking so much and not making a pick, this is pretty much a, a hands down, no questions asked pick for me. Uh, with Cook going first, CMC going second, which you can pretty much flip-flop those guys depending upon your mindset. Uh, Derrick Henry going third. Now, this is a PPR draft, okay? So that's a points per reception, and Derrick Henry is not involved in the passing game as much, okay? Even though he does get a little bit of work, he's really not that guy, and especially with the addition of, Derek, of uh, Julio Jones, you're not going to see 
Derrick Henry catch a whole lot of passes, maybe even take a reduction in that. But if they go up big, they got the defense to hold a lead and they're going to just pound it out for the rest of the game. So you got a good, good choice in that one. So the other guy that you're going to have here, Alvin Kamara, look, Super Camario, as he is called by the ballers, this guy is just, and I cannot believe that Devontae Adams went and fell to the second. That's just crazy. Sorry, caught me off guard there. Um, but Kamara, with having Mike uh, Michael Thomas down for like six weeks, he's going to be the only game in town as far as their offense goes. This does give Adam Troutman at tight end a definite bump, uh, but not big enough to kind of out, you know, outmaneuver of anybody else in, that if you're looking for an early take at uh, tight end. We see Kelsey go off the board here in the eighth, which is pretty much what you're going to have to pay. Now, here's the thing I want you guys to remember is that, when these guys are going early, when you're taking guys like Mahomes, you see they're taken in the second round of the fifth pick. Kelsey taking the first round of the eighth overall. Once you take these guys, yes, you are locked in in that position, but we're looking for value as well in the draft. And when you're looking for value, Kelsey and Mahomes, they have got to live up to that number one pick, just like Kamara, CMC, Dalvin Cook, all these guys. They have got to be that guy that you expect them to in order to pay off. It's when you get in the fourth, fifth, sixth rounds, the middle rounds, where you're looking for value, okay? You're looking for guys who are going to outperform their ADP, which is average draft position. You find a guy in the eighth, like my wife did uh, last year. She found Waller uh, in the eighth, nobody was expecting him to be what he was. Now you can't get him any lower than the third. Uh, and here in a couple of minutes, he'll probably go off the board. Now, again, talking a little bit, but in the first through fourth round, you can pretty much guarantee that you're going to go running back, running back. Okay. Now here's what I like. And here's a dilemma for me. Joe Mixon or Najee? The good thing about mock draft, I don't have to make that decision and it be locked in. When it's your real draft, yes, you have to make this decision. But do a couple of mock drafts from the same position. Try to get the same player and, you know, tweak it here and there. So I'm going to take Najee and see how everything else falls. So Najee's gone, Metcalf, Mixon, Ridley, Gibson is gone, A.J. Brown gone, and J.K. Dobbins. Now, here's the thing about Dobbins is that I don't like anybody else on the Ravens except Lamar and maybe Mark Andrews. But the thing I don't like is the price that you got to pay for Andrews. You've got to pay up to get him, and I'm not willing to do that at the tight end position. Okay. Now. This is, this is something that you got to look at as well. I am loving some Justin Jefferson's second year. They call it second year breakout, but this guy broke out last year. He had the best uh, rookie season for a wide receiver ever, okay? And we really don't see him slowing down any. The only thing that gives me a pause here is the fact that Dalvin Cook is as involved in the passing game as he is, okay? Now, thing to look at, how is their defense? Because remember, in fantasy, a bad defense equals outstanding output for your stars on offense because they're going to have to be on the field more. They're going to have to score more points. OK, especially if you have a pass catching running back like CMC or Dalvin Cook. Carolina's got a bad defense. That's good for CMC. If Minnesota has a bad defense, that's good for Dalvin Cook. Guys like Jonathan Taylor, however, have an outstanding defense. So they're not going to have to score as many points, but you're going to get that running that yards production out of him. 
me personally at that at the five spot i would have taken chubb uh i actually would have probably reached up and snatched adams because there are so many other running backs that could have had in second that being said i see a few wide receivers and wide receivers are going to go primarily in the fourth or fifth round uh you're going to see you see some of them the top guys go here but I'm going to build depth at the position and I'm going to go CEH. And if you guys watched my last show, you saw how I talked about how CEH's last year hype could be this year's truth. Okay. Now let's scroll down here a little bit. We'll see what's going on. Now, the one thing I, I could have done here is I could have taken Jefferson. CEH would have probably gone you know, a little, little later, and then Montgomery would have fallen to me, and I would have been perfectly fine taking David Montgomery in the fourth, okay? Um, I don't like Miles Sanders. They've got uh, Jalen Hurts, who they're looking at as a pass get, or as a, um, a dual threat quarterback, so that's going to kind of negate his production, and that's something that you have to think about. Now, here's some guys. You got Daryl Henderson, Travis Etienne, Kareem Hunt, Miles Gaskin, James Robinson. All five of those guys are absolutely fine, but I don't have to worry about that because now I can concentrate on wide receiver and load up on wide receiver. I've still got Mike Evans here. So I'm going to take Mike Evans as my one. You see Josh Allen off the board, Kyle Pitts off the board. And Pitts is, he's a wild card this year. Okay. I'm telling you guys. Um, and we see Robert Woods go, and I'm going to do this, and this is pretty much how they're going a lot in ADP, is Cooper Cup and Robert Woods right back-to-back -back on each other because you really, they're going to get theirs. Now we see Kyler go here in the back half of the fifth. Kenny Galladay, I do not trust Daniel Jones or the, the Giants offense at all. Uh, Deontay Johnson, I like a lot. Um, let's see. QB, if you guys want to jump up and take Russell Wilson here, I'm perfectly fine with that. Um, sorry, I just about had an aneurysm. I thought I drafted CD Lamb by accident. So looking at the wrong team, uh, you guys know I don't draft Dallas players. And this is a do as I say, not as I do type thing. Don't have that kind of prejudice because it doesn't work out well. Um, I just can't, as a longtime Washington fan, stomach rooting for any Cowboy fan success or a Cowboys success. But that's just me. Um, so we see Mark Andrews off the board now. Here in the sixth, I've got – I've locked in on running backs. I've got my two wide receivers. There's really nobody that I particularly have to have right now. Um, and I don't know if you guys can hear my dog, Suki, is trying to make an appearance. Um, but anyway, uh, so – at tight end, this is somebody that I think is going to could possibly be that next level tight end. And we see Kelsey, Kittle, uh, Pitts, Waller, all these guys are off the board. Um, Waller and Kittle going in the third, which is where you're going to have to pay for them. Pitts, somebody is going to be all about that, and they're going to want to jump up and grab him. They're, they're going to want to be that guy that calls their shot on a rookie tight end and is right. Rookie tight ends take a long time normally to pan out in their, uh, their first season. So I like Pitts. I know he's a freak of nature. He was taken earliest over anybody, any other pass catcher, not just tight end, but just pass catcher in this year's draft. However, I'm going to take, TJ Hawkinson, and you're going to have to pay up a little bit to get Hawkinson, okay? Um, 
So we see it come around. Uh, Javante Williams, another guy that you could get a running back that you could get later if you wanted to do uh, a little more, concentrate a little more on the wide receivers. Uh, like if you wanted to get down here in T9, Adams Robinson, uh, you could have gone down and he could, instead of taking Kareem Hunt, could take in Javante Williams from Denver. That could have been a possibility. Michael Thomas in the seventh. I don't like it. There's other guys on the board that you could have taken. Um, T. Higgins, Juju. Uh, Chase just got dinged up. So that's going to be something that you're going to want to keep an eye on. Uh, see the severity of that. Uh, I like Cortland Sutton. Um, again, you want to keep an eye on the injuries. Check out quarterback right quick. Now, we see Russell Wilson still up there, okay? Now, I'm trying to do something here. I want to show you guys. Um, well, actually, I can, we can talk about it real quick. There's something that we in the – if you've been a longtime fantasy player, you want to do what's called a stack, okay? And where's my time at? Okay, here we go. I got a minute. You want to do what's called a stack, and that's where you take a quarterback and one of their pass catchers. So uh, because I have Cooper Cup, because I have Mike Evans, my target for a quarterback could be Tom Brady or Matt Stafford. OK, I'm not really big on Brady. I want to target someone else. Um, you look at your board. Sorry, I scroll down too far. Um, you see that. Mahomes is gone. Allen is gone for that team. Jackson's gone. Murray, uh, Herbert, and Prescott. You've got two other players that don't have quarterbacks right now, and you've got four picks. So that being said, I'm going to jump up in the seventh. Or actually, I'll tell you what. Let's take a look real quick and see what we've got left here. So at wide receiver, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to snag T. Higgins here with Joe Burrow coming back. Uh, and we see Aaron Rodgers. That was going to be my boy. That was going to be my quarterback right there. Um, but that's the risk you run. And Russell Wilson finally off the board there. Um, now, if you're one of those people who does like late round quarterbacks, this is definitely going to be a target for you guys. Tom Brady, Matt Stafford, and Tannehill. Okay. Those are guys who are going later in the draft. You can concentrate on something else. Here, if I want to build depth, I've got three locked and loaded running backs. Okay. So I'm going to look at Michael Carter a little farther down in the uh, in the draft, but I want to keep an eye on him. Now, Debo is very interesting here uh, in the eighth, but I want to go Robbie Anderson because I do really strongly believe this year in Sam Darnold. I know I'm in the minority here, but I do. Um, and when we're getting close to the double digit rounds, this is when you start calling your shots on guys. OK, you start calling your shots around the 10th round. And when I say that, I mean, you want to start taking those chances. You've got to have some kind of risk involved in order for this stuff to pay to pay out. You can't just be safe across the board. Number one, it's no fun. And number two, you're going to wind up with an average team. OK, so. Jarvis is one of those safe guys. Debo Samuel, he's not really a high risk, but he is a high injury risk. Uh, the guy can't stay healthy. And Brandon Ayuk would definitely have been the better choice here. But he went, let's see, I know. Yeah, he went in the fifth. So he went at the five, at the 508. So the back half of the fifth round. 
So now we're locked in a tight end. I don't have to worry about that. Pretty much everybody's got a quarterback except me. So let's see what we have. My guys are still here. So let's go ahead and build some more depth. Wide receiver. Yeah. Ronald Jones, I don't like the backfield right now. It's too crowded in Tampa Bay. So wide receiver, I'm going to call a shot on a guy who there's a lot of questions with. And I wasn't real big on him last year, but he is the lone person left from last year's squad. And I'm talking about Brandon Cooks. Look, for whatever reason, the guy, he does produce where he goes, okay? He hasn't been real flashy. He's been injury prone as far as concussions. So, and we see, I just lost Michael Carter here in the 10th, but this is why we do mock drafts. We want to get a lay of the land and see where people are falling, okay? So, uh, Damien Harris is also a guy who I would definitely lean on if you were looking for late round running backs, okay? But I've got good depth at the wide receiver. I got good depth at running back. Um, DJ David Johnson and Houston, I don't, I wouldn't rely on. And the same reason why I took Cooks is the same reason why I'm going to leave David Johnson alone um, because they have a horrible offense or horrible defense. But regardless of who the quarterback is, they're going to have to throw the ball. And Brandon Cooks is it. D hops out of town. Uh, you know, a lot of other guys are gone. So uh, they ship Randall Cobb back to Green Bay. Uh, Anthony Miller just got hurt. So Brandon Cooks is it. So if you want to target a late round wide receiver and call your shot on him, Brandon Cooks is somebody to look at. OK, um, I don't like Zach Moss. I don't like A.J. Dillon. Uh, he A.J. Dillon, you need to rely on Aaron Jones getting hurt in order to take him. So let's go ahead. Trevor Lawrence, I don't like the rookie. Joe Burrow coming back. Um, eh, uh, if he does pop, then I definitely wanted T. Higgins. That's why I took him. Matt Stafford is interesting. Um, and I think what we're going to do here is something that I usually don't do. But I'm going to take Stafford and let's see how things pan out here. Oh, and I just missed. I just missed. And this is the risk you run when you play the game. Okay. Burrow was ahead of Tannehill in the standings, but Burrow or Tannehill got taken. So I was left with Matt Stafford. I don't mind missing out on him. Uh, what I was going to do is I was going to try to double tap on quarterback, which means you take a guy back to back. Okay. Um, but since that did not work out, let's go ahead and see what we've got going on here. Now, here's a guy that you can take a shot on, uh, Will Fuller. He's going to come off suspension. Uh, he's going to be out for week one, but I've got depth at wide receiver. And if I want to go ahead and trade him out, I've got trade bait to, to trade him out if he does pop. Yeah. So let's go ahead. Let's take Will Fuller and pray on, on uh, to uh, actually doing something this year, okay? Uh, Logan Thomas here, he's an interesting pick. He's, of course, uh, my Washington boy, so I got to give him some props. Uh, he looks really good, but Fitzpatrick is not known for targeting his tight ends. Maybe things will change here in Washington, but we will see. Now, we see the Bucks go off the board, and I'm going to show you guys here what is going to happen? You're going to, I'm going to take Washington's defense just so I have the defense that I want. Okay. And we see the Ravens go off the board and we see the Rams go off the board and the Steelers go off the board. This is going to happen in your home draft, in your redraft leagues. You're going to have guys who you see one player taken from a certain position and there's going to be what we call a run done on that position. 
and you're going to sit there and go, oh my gosh, I have to get this. I have to get this player. He's going to go. He's, he, he took the one that I wanted. So I need to get the next best guy. Calm down, pump your brakes. Remember, this is your team, not someone else's. Don't let someone else influence your draft pick. Okay. Stay on target. Okay. If you're a Star Wars fan, you get the reference. Okay. So if you don't, I don't know where you're living right now. Okay. I don't know if it's a communist country, but if you haven't seen the Star Wars movies and you know what I'm talking about, go find out. Okay. Uh, it's the fourth episode, the original Star Wars that was released back in the 70s. Okay. Go watch it. That's all I got to say. Uh, and remember, down the bottom, subscribe, like, and share. Tell me how you like it, even if you don't. If you don't, watch it again. It'll grow on you. Um, so that being said, let's take a look. We've got our, our uh, defense locked in. I've got the next three picks to go out and get basically who I think is going to pop or who I think uh, is going to hit. Now, here's one that is slipping way down. But if this guy goes off, getting him in the 13th round is going to be a steal. And that's Mike Williams with the Chargers. Look, he's got double-digit touchdown potential if he can stay healthy. And that's a big if for Mike Williams because he's already hurt in, in uh, preseason. Now, also, I need to take a look at who was left for – my backup quarterback. I'm good with any of these guys. I'm good with, uh, actually, I tell you what, right now I'll go ahead and do it because I've, I've missed out on a couple of guys, but I will take Trey Lance. Uh, shout out to my boy Chet. Uh, so he's a huge Niners fan. Um, and I, I'm thinking that he absolutely loves Trey Lance. Um, I'm ha I haven't spoken to him about it this season, but I intend to. Um, the rushing upside for Trey Lance is absolutely off the chart. And he, because I've got Matt Stafford, I can go in. If I need to stream Fitzpatrick, if I need to pick up Zach Wilson, I can do so. If I need to drop one of these other guys, I can do that. Um, they get, I've given, been given the flexibility with taking – as many running backs early going uh, a robust RB is what they call it in the first three rounds. Doing that has given me a lot of flexibility in other spots. Okay. So let's look last round. Now Latavius Murray usually would be my pick here, um, but it's rumored that he's not even going to make the squad. Uh, they've, they've brought in a bunch of guys. I don't know what's going to happen. Let's see. Running back, not a whole lot of guys that I like. Uh, Marvin Jones could be, pardon me, could be something. But I don't know if I want to trust Carson Wentz. Or I'm sorry, if I want to trust uh, Trevor Lawrence. So I will take a handcuff here. And if you want to take a handcuff late, a handcuff is basically the backup to one of the stars, a backup to one of your guys in the first or second round. So Chubba Hubbard is the backup for Christian McCaffrey, much like Mike Davis was last year. So if something happens that you want to take him, go ahead. You could also uh, target Alexander Madison. Although last year when Dalvin Cook did go down a couple of games to injury. Madison was not what we thought. So I'm kind of gun shy about him. But I'll go ahead and take Chubba Hubbard and we'll wrap this thing up. We see Johnu Smith, and that's uh, taking him as the last pick to round out your draft. Let's see. He had this team took Mark Andrews. So He's got one of the top five tight ends. So that's a flex, uh, flexibility that he had there. Now let's take a real quick look before we wrap this whole thing up. 
So we see we went pretty much uh, running back heavy in the first. We see team one went, and this is interesting to see because you have two teams at the top who went vastly different strategies. They went, team one went Dalvin Cook and then went crazy on uh, pass catchers. Didn't take another running back until a rookie in the seventh. Now that's really late. I don't recommend that strategy because that's you're gonna just be really laden with uh, wide receiver and pretty much no depth at running back. And then we see team two, Joe Mixon, uh, CMC at the first, Joe Mixon at the second, and Antonio Gibson in the third. While I like those, the choice of Julio at the 409, could have had Godwin, he could have had Cup or Woods. I would have taken either one of those guys over Julio. Julio is, I'm just gun shot on Julio, guys. So forgive me on that. Um, and then went Herbert, I like that. And then he had to go wide receiver heavy, much as I did, because I went so heavy on uh, on running backs early. So there you have it, guys. Some kind of idea of how to set a foundation for your fantasy team. And don't forget, today's verse of the day in Proverbs. Remember, your foundation that will keep you going through the storms of life is our Lord Jesus Christ. So I hope it was uplifting. I hope it was informative. Down the bottom, subscribe, like, and share. Don't forget my sponsors, Zia of Lafayette and Keller's Bakery in Youngsville. Send them some love. You can find Keller's Bakery on Facebook. They do take orders through there. And you can find Zia of Lafayette on Waiter or DoorDash. So until next time, God bless, stay safe, and we'll see you guys next time on Faith and Football.